Every classroom teacher in the United States in this day and age needs to know a little something about teaching students from other countries. It doesn't matter if you're a college professor or a K-12 teacher, you need to know how to teach students who don't know a lot of English. According to the Institute of International Education's website, there were 609,923 international students in U.S. colleges and universities during the 2009-2010 academic year, and the number has been increasing every year. And according to data gathered from 2010-2011 by the Center for Immigration Studies, there are more than 50 million immigrants and their children, legal and illegal status, in this country. This means 10.4 million students in the public school system come from an immigrant household. That's one in five public school students. Of these, 78%, or one in four, speaks a language other than English. In this presentation, you will begin to understand the difference between language arts and English as a second language. You will also get some ideas to teach and support your English language learners. Before we begin, it's important to know how and how not to refer to these students. In many government documents, you will see the label LEP. This stands for Limited English Proficient. This is not the best way to refer to these students because this label is not person first language. In other words, it has negative connotations because it focuses on what a student cannot do. The best way to refer to this group of students is ELL, which stands for English Language Learner. Can you see the difference between LEP and ELL? ELL focuses on what the student is doing. Another acceptable name for these students is ESOL, English Speakers of Other Languages. You can see here some of the other acronyms that are used in the field of teaching English as a second language that you might encounter as an educator. In this lecture, you are learning how to teach English language arts to your English as a second language learners. So what is the difference between English as a second language and language arts? Teaching English to those who already speak it well is a different task than teaching it to non-native speakers. The objective of teachers of language arts, or English, is to help native speakers increase and refine their knowledge of and their skills in using English. In contrast, the objective of teachers of ESL is to give their students a basic working command of the English language. By the time they enter school, native speakers of English have learned to pronounce English words and to put them together into sentences with native pronunciation and structure. Native speakers also know certain rules of communication that vary from culture to culture, such as how to make suggestions or how to apologize, also known as language functions and culture teaching. On the other hand, ESL instruction includes teaching these rules, teaching other aspects of using English, and teaching information about American culture. Language arts pre-service teachers receive training in academic specialization, including literature and regional dialects, pedagogy and assessment, and a minimum of 10 weeks of student teaching with a licensed English language arts teacher. What constitutes proper preparation for teaching ESL? In 1975, Teachers of English to Speakers of Other Languages, or TESOL Inc., an international organization, adopted guidelines for certification and preparation of teachers of English to Speakers of Other Languages in the United States. Then, in October 2001, the National Council for the Accreditation of Teacher Education, NCATE, approved TESOL's performance-based standards for the preparation and licensure of ESL educators. The TESOL NCATE standards for pre-K through 12 teacher education are divided into five domains, language, 
culture, instruction, assessment, and professionalism. They were re revised again and approved in 2009. In addition to defining the role and specifying professional competencies and personal qualities of the ESOL teacher in American schools, the guidelines list the features of an appropriate education program for teachers of ESL. Briefly, the major program components suggested are the following. Academic specialization, including courses covering language. The grammatical, phonological, and semantic systems of English. The process of language learning, both first and second languages. And language and culture. Pedagogy, including courses covering mythology, second language assessment, and practical experience. The learning of another language, including its linguistic structure and cultural system. These guidelines have been used by some states to develop their requirements for certificates or endorsements. In Florida, the ESOL endorsement was created as a result of the Florida Consent Decree of 1990. The State Department of Education was fully aware of TESOL Inc.'s recommendations for standards when creating the FEEPS. In the introductory lecture in this series, a lecture called ESOL Issues, Principles, and Practices, What Every Classroom Teacher Needs to Know About Second Language Acquisition, you were introduced to several second language acquisition theories. It doesn't matter whether you are thinking about language arts or ESL. In both fields, the teacher needs to be focused on teaching academic English. Jim Cummins' iceberg theory differentiates between BICs, or the English used to communicate in informal social situations, and CALP, or the English used in academic environments. After much research, Shamo and O'Malley recommended that English language learners enter grade level classes in a particular order, based on the nature of the way language is presented to students. They suggest that English language learners enter mainstream science classes first, because their ability to understand and produce language is supported by traditional approaches to science lessons. The discovery and hands-on approaches used in many classroom activities in science provide ample contextual support for academic language development. Then, Shimo and O'Malley say students can enter math because it has its own unique language, especially in solving word problems. This math language has fewer language demands than the language used in the other content areas, so it's comparatively easier for students to manage. ELL should be introduced to mainstream social studies classes third because of the language demands in the reading material in particular. Last but not least, language arts should be taken. This is because of the various types and functions of language needed to read and write. The functions of literary text are more varied than for any other content area. The functions include describing, narrating, persuading, entertaining, teaching values, and words themselves present problems for ESL students. For example, a lot of culturally driven symbolism occurs in poetry. Some words familiar to ESL students can be used in a novel way. Some words are used colloquially. Other words have specific cultural and literary reference, and still other words can be used metaphorically. There are many words which have fallen into disuse in contemporary English. Teachers need to be aware of the vocabulary demands of all kinds of authentic text and show their students how to comprehend and enjoy what they read. Probably the most important difference between Bix and CALP for a teacher to realize is that it takes an ELL about two years to acquire Bix, but it takes that same ELL between five and ten years to acquire enough CALP to function like a native English speaker in a classroom. The implication of this is staggering. If a student comes to the U.S. in eighth grade or about 13 years old, it will take until 10th grade to master a social English and his freshman year of college at best to master CALP. Language arts is such a vast field that is divided into two parts, reading 
and writing. Many state standards and the Common Core standards actually divide the field further, as does the field of English as a second language, to also include speaking skills and listening skills. Because of this, three other related lectures have been created, one focusing on reading, another on writing, and the last on speaking and listening. Let's continue our discussion there.